Hello everyone, my name is Francisco and I am part of the team of developers for AIDA Core here at EPFL. And in this video, I am going to show you a brief introduction to the AIDA plugin ecosystem. For this, I will assume that you already went through the previous videos that explain what AIDA is and how to use it, and that you are already familiar with specific concepts required by AIDA, such as the provenance, the provenance graph, calculations, workflows, etc. What all of this means specific in the context of AIDA. Um, so in this video, I'll start by explaining what a plugin is and then how the integration of plugin with AIDA works which is particularly important when making your own plugins. Then we're going to have a look at the code of a small demo plugin that we wrote called AIDA Div, that is actually intended to help people get started with plugin development. And finally, I'm going to close with a few words of advice on general plugin development. So what is an AIDA plugin? Basically, an AIDA plugin is just a Python class that inherits from one of AIDA core pluginable types. Because AIDA core really just provides the basic infrastructure materials, meaning a database model for storing all the information, the tools to construct and work with the provenance graph, an engine to manage the running workflows, and these pluginable classes here. But a priori, AIDA doesn't know things like how to interact with specific codes. So in order to apply all of this AIDA management and tracking machinery to any specific task, one must first create or uh, get, if they already exist, the necessary plugins. And what do these plugins do? Well, some of them you already know. Uh, we have uh, the calculations, for example, which indicate to AIDA how to use external codes, meaning how to construct the input files, how to run the executable, etc. Then closely related to this are the parsers, which specify how the output files of a finished calculation should be parsed into the output data nodes. Then we have the workflows which are complex procedures that concatenate multiple calculations together. And uh, it can codify things like automatic error handling and other relevant logic that happens in between the runs of this one or multiple codes. Then we have data types, which are for specific data structures where you would need more control on what to store in the database. For example, if you wanted to store in the matrix of a charge density using a NumPy arrays. And the Verdi command plugins then allow you to expand the features of the Verdi command line to create your own, your own custom commands. Then we have uh, also some types of plugins that come with the base code like transports and schedulers. And we will come back to this later, but so you know what they do. Basically, they indicate to AIDA how to communicate with the machine where you want to run your calculations. So the computational clusters, for example, how to copy files there, how to submit jobs, and how to generally interact with these machines. And finally, of course, uh, there are other types of plugins besides this. Uh, as the plugin ecosystem is a dynamic one where the exact uh, plugin types available might expand in the future as we add more features to the code. Uh, just one word of nomenclature before we move on. We call each of these extensions an AIDA plugin, but these are not typically found in isolation. Instead, groups of related plugins are usually bundled together into Python packages that we will call AIDA plugin packages. These can, of course, then be distributed in any way you want. For example, by using the Python package index, so then they are just 
users are able to just install them by just running pip install. And you may also register your package on the AIDA plugin registry. The AIDA plugin registry is a collection of the most popular publicly available plugins for AIDA. And you can find it here at this web address. Here we have included an old screenshot of the site where you can see how we display the information of how many packages are listed in the registry, what the content of these packages is divided into the specific plugins. Furthermore, you can see the list of packages and the detail for each of them, such as we have here, for example, for the AIDA Siesta plugin packages, which currently provides two calculation, two different calculation plugins in it. Again, this is an old screenshot. And at the time of recording, actually, we have over 80 plugin packages registered. And there might be even more by the time you, you're watching this video. Now, the mechanism used to manage this plugin, these plugins is called the entry point system. And we have decided to implement it this way to address several problems. One of them is findability. So the tools provided in the Python library, the methods, the functions, are not trivial to find and sometimes require a lot of documentation effort to keep updated, uh, which also then becomes an interoperability, interoperability aspect as the core of AIDA must be able to find these subclasses and incorporate them into their own existing mechanism, such as the verdict command line, whether this is for adding new custom commands or even just by knowing the list of available plugins in order to list them for users to see. Now, the goal then here is to let plugins extend existing AIDA interfaces so that AIDA users can easily know where to find and how to use the functionality they provide. So we are not going to go into all the details of how the entry point system work, but an important question for you as a potential plugin developer is how does this affect what I have to do when introducing new AIDA plugins? And for this, we just need to know how the entry points are defined. They are defined in the setup files of the Python packages used to bundle these plugins, where each specific object is will be associated with a string identifier, as we will see now. Uh, one brief mention that there is there are several ways of describing Python packages, and here we are showing the version that uses the setup.json file in this example, but actually we have a recently transition to the pyproject.toml model. And I will show this second uh, newer way later so that you're exposed to at least two of the most common sites available. But for now we will deal with the setup.json format. It is also important to note that whenever one makes changes to these setup files, the Python packages needs to be reinstalled in order for the changes to be recognized by the environment. So with that out of the way, now let's start looking at the example here. We have a list of entry points provided by the AIDA diff demo package that we will see in more detail later. And for now, let's pay attention at how the entry points are specified. Let's take this Python object, for example, which would be your hypothetical new plugin. In this case, it's an AIDA diff calculation class or, or diff calculation class that is defined in the module that is located at this internal path. And the object is then associated to the diff string identifier, which is now the label that, we, that will identify your new plugin. And all of this is placed within an AIDA plugin group which in this case is the AIDA calculation group. And this is what then allows AIDA to recognize the entry points that are relevant and refer to the possible plugins. This here 
are the group labels that correspond to each type of plugin. You can see that for most of them, the only change one needs to do is to append AIDA and a dot before the name of the plugin. But there are some cases that might be slightly different. To see a list of the available plugin groups, you just need to run the birdly plugin list command. Uh, so you can see here the output of set command. And uh, as the report message, you can see here the list of the available entry point groups as, as described here. And as the report message below shows, you can get even more details about a specific group of plugins just by including its name as a parameter. So if we then do that, uh, and if we wanted to use it to know what are the available plugins for the AIDA calculation group, we can just list them like this. And you will notice that here among the list is the diff calculation from our previous example. And there now below, we have a different report message as well that tell us that there is even more information about the specific plugin to be discovered by adding its name as an additional parameter. So we'll run again the Verdi plugin list command, this time with the group and the specific plugin within that group. And we get all of this information, which includes uh, a brief description of the class behind the plugin, the type of inputs required, type of outputs returned by the plugin, and even the possible errors and exit calls that can be raised by the class. Now, before moving on, I want to briefly mention again that the AIDA core package already comes with a bunch of entry points for what are the most typical tasks. And uh, they are defined in the pyproject.toml file, just as I described before. Again, note here that the syntax is slightly different from what we saw before in the setup.json file. This is no longer a Python dictionary. And uh, so as we said in the beginning, unless you use a very uncommon or custom-made communication protocol with uh, the machines where you run your calculations, the transport and scheduler plugins included in the base distribution should be enough to communicate with almost any remote supercomputer cluster. If it was the case that the protocols you require are not supported here, then it shouldn't be the, too difficult to create your own plugin for it. Uh, and you will learn how to do this in the respective session. Now, having seen how the plugins are set up and specified, the next question is how to use them. So you will see this uh, better in the sections on how to run and design calculations and workflows. But very briefly, you can basically get the underlying class uh, of the plugin by using the factory methods of the AIDA plugin module and the label identifier of the plugin. Then once you have this class, you just use it as normal as any other Python class, which of course will depend on the type of plugin that you're dealing with specifically. But that's basically it of how to generally use plugins. Now, we have seen how to define the plugins. We have seen how to use them. It's very easy. This is essentially all you need to know about plugins in general. And although this means you already know all that is necessary to start writing your own plugins, there are a couple of aids or tips that we want to go over before uh, ending the video to give uh, some guidance uh, on the task. The first thing is to introduce the AIDA diff demo plugin package. This is where all the examples of this presentation come from, and it is essentially a template to help you get started with plugins development. So you can go to GitHub, clone this repository here, uh, and start modifying it to create your own plugin packages. Uh, the, the this specific plugin wraps the diff executable, which is 
a binary that most Unix systems typically use to compute the difference between files. And uh, for AIDA, this process can be translated essentially uh, in the following node graph, representing taking the two data nodes that contain the files uh, to be compared and calculating the difference between them and getting it as an output node. The repository, if you go to the page listed uh, before, contains quite a large number of files, many of them which are not really essential to get started with plugin development, but that can become quite useful as your plugin packages grows and progress. Uh, besides the pyproject.toml that we discussed before, the core content of the repository where most of the actual plugin code is located, so where you want to focus your attention, is in this AIDA diff subfolder. You will see that uh, AIDA diff here has the content, the actual content of the plugin package, and that it contains a calculation plugin that tells AIDA how to create the inputs uh, from the from the data nodes, how to create the files and how to execute the, the diff binary. It contains a parser plugin, which uh, tells AIDA how to parse the output into an output data node, which just simply by storing the file there. And, uh, and it actually contains a new data, data types a new data type and uh, an extension for the Verdi command line interface also to to facilitate the usage of the of this feature and finally there are some auxiliary functions located in this uh, helpers file but these uh, are not translated uh, they don't translate into any sort of aida plugin they are just mostly for internal use so this is the content, and by editing and playing around with these files here, you can start experimenting on how to create your own plugins. And uh, I will tell you that even I still use this as a template when I want to start a new plugin project. So it is a very useful tool. Uh, the repository also contains a detailed readme with a brief description of all of these contents that we've been going through and in a bit more detail. And then also below, there are some links to other videos and resources that can help you get started and understand more deeply this uh, plugin. Now, having seen this tool, I would like to leave you with some plugin, uh, general plugin design guidelines to help you get started. The first one of which is to start simple. So you don't need to create fancy new classes and adapt perfectly to the data structures of a code when you're just starting to create a new calculation plugin. Try to reuse the data classes from AIDA and focus on getting the minimal, more simple plugin that you can use the code, uh, that, that can use the code in the most versatile way possible. You can then add fancy stuff like checks and shortcuts progressively once you have uh, the baseline covered, but always try to start simple. Second, try to preserve all of the data. Uh, when you are getting used to the concept of the provenance and how data nodes work, it is common to wonder what kind of information should be connected as an input node and how exactly to do so. Try to always include every parameter that affects the calculation inside at least one of the input nodes uh, so that you have a correct record uh, of all of the variables that influence the outcome, the outcome of the calculation of workflows that you execute. Then, thirdly, aim to expose the full functionality of the underlying executables and processes. Especially when writing calculus and work chains, it is very tempting to write something that exclusively uses one feature or a specific set of options from the underlying executable. This uh, makes it easier to write checks and long procedures because you can guarantee a lot of the assumptions in the middle of the process. 
but we advise you to try to avoid this. You can later write methods that act as shortcuts for setting up very complex workflows in a simple way, but don't make this the only way to run your plugin. Always try to expose all of the options to the end user and try to always give your users the chance to configure things differently, even if this is done so at their own risk of, of things not working uh, in an insured way. Then try not to use any methods of AIDA that are meant to be internal. Uh, because there is no guarantee that these methods will continue to exist in the future or that they will keep doing what they currently do. This is why they are internal. They are for internal usage within the AIDA core uh, methods. If at some point you think you need to rely on one of these internal methods that is not part of the public API for some reason, try to contact us first. We might be able to provide an alternative or we might end up uh, adding this required method or some version of it as part of the public API where it will be ensured to, to work in the future or at least to have some deprecation pathway uh, before it is removed. And uh, fifth, when deciding what to store and parse, write down all of the outputs of your code and organize the information contained in them according to the following guidelines that you see is listed here. Decide what of this information you need for querying. Uh, so what are the characteristics by which you want to filter and organize all of these procedures that you're running? And what information you need to keep as a record for further analysis but it's not something that you need to constantly be referencing in order to identify the processes or understand what, uh, what it did and what the results were. These considerations will help you decide uh, how to better deal with uh, the output information. Finally, I'm going back to the AIDA diff repository for a final piece of advice, write tests. Um, we know that the typical development workflow of scientific programmers make them somewhat reluctant to write tests. Uh, after all, you typically start with some script that you write for yourself. You fiddle around with them until you finally get everything to work. And at that point, uh, why should you write any extra code for something that already works? Well, the fact is that if you only use your code once and never need it again, it would be fine, but that actually never is the case. As you start modifying your scripts to, to include new cases, to expand the usability of your scripts, some of the old cases might stop working uh, even without you noticing. And now afterwards, when you need to go back to the old use cases, or if you give it to some coworker that you're trying to help, and the scripts don't work, it is now not so easy to figure out the exact cause of, of, this, of these problems. So do a favor to the future maintainers of your plugin package, including your future self. Learn a bit about uh, unit testings and write some tests as you develop your code. So to conclude, we have seen that AIDA plugin packages extend AIDA existing uh, interfaces by using Python entry points. We have seen what these entry points are conceptually, how to use them to load the classes behind them, and how to write your own. We introduced the AIDA diff plugin package as a template that you can use to start writing your own plugins. And we have given you some guidelines on how to go about doing this. The most important ones to remember are to start simple, um, always preserve the data provenance, and write tests to help with the maintainability of your code. If you want to read more about 
plugin design, there are several sections of data documentation that can help you with this. So you have a general topic section with uh, about plugins that describe the system more in general and gives you a more in-depth idea of how this works. But you have also more practical how-to guides about writing plugin package in general, how to write a package plugin, and uh, uh, how to write certain types of plugins in specific, such as culture plugins or workshop plugins. If you have any other questions or problems when developing your plugins, you can always also contact us in the AIDA team through the normal channels, that is the AIDA mailing list or the AIDA core GitHub page. And uh, we are really committed to fostering the community of AIDA plugin developers. And while the AIDA team itself, which develops the core of the framework is largely centered at EPFL, there is a wide network of plugin authors that is spread across Europe and even starting to grow beyond this with contributors from China or Japan, for example. So we hope to count with your contribution as well in the future. For now, that is all I have to tell you about plugins. I hope you found this information useful and that you continue to learn more about AIDA and you use it to help you in your own research.